Welcome to Some Guy's Garage. In November last year, Porsche announced the 2022 Cayman GT4 RS, and in a couple weeks, the driving reviews of the Cayman will be coming out. Today, I'd like to give you my take on the Porsche Cayman GT4 RS. First, a little bit of history. The 718 Cayman has been around since the 2016 model year as the 982 generation. It was met with a lot of skepticism as Porsche ditched the traditional, naturally aspirated flat 6 engine that all previous Caymans and Boxers had to go with a turbocharged Boxer 4 with either 2 or 2.5 liters of displacement. This took away much of the soul and character of the Cayman and created a lot of controversy around the new generation, even if it did bring better performance. With the 718 Cayman GT4 release in 2019, they brought back the flat 6, and shortly thereafter replaced the 2.5 liter 4 cylinder in the GTS model with a detuned version of the same flat 6 as well, and called it the GTS 4.0. Now with the new GT4 RS, they've taken another step beyond that by putting essentially the same 4-liter engine that is used in the GT3 into the Cayman platform. This 4-liter is a motorsports-derived engine, unlike the GT4 and GTS, which have an enlarged and non-turbo version of the 3-liter turbo from the 992 generation 911. This is the first time that a Cayman has had an engine that rivals anything from the 911 line, something everyone has not so secretly hoped Porsche would do, but figured they wouldn't risk 911 sales by making the cheaper Cayman perform nearly on par with a GT version of the 911. The Cayman being mid-engine rather than rear-engine has always had the potential to be the better sports car, given the arguably superior mid-engine layout. As for specifications on the new GT4 RS, it will make 493 horsepower and 332 pounds-feet of torque and rev all the way to 9,000 RPM. It will only be available with the 7-speed PDK. There will be no manual option, likely because the existing mid-engine manual gearbox could not handle the power. Even in the GT4 and GTS, the manuals were slightly derated torque-wise versus the PDK due to this limitation, and they wouldn't develop a new gearbox just for the GT4 RS. The PDK also has shorter ratios than in the regular GT4, solving another common complaint about the overly tall gearing resulting in less opportunities to rev all the way to redline. The GT4 RS will do 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds with a top speed of 196 miles per hour. The chassis, as usual, has a variety of improvements including different dampers, spring rates, roll bars, and ball joints. It will get even larger brakes at 408mm in the front standard or optionally 410mm PCCBs. It's slightly lighter by 35 kilograms than the regular GT4 with more carbon fiber and other weight savings, along with 25% more downforce than the GT4 through various aero treatments, including an even bigger swan neck wing. Of course, the highlight of the changes remains that 4 liter flat 6, with special intakes that let a lot more of the induction sound into the cabin. I think we can all agree Porsche did this Cayman right. This might be one of the most desirable enthusiast cars ever made. A nearly 500 horsepower, naturally aspirated mid-engine sports car that revs to 9,000 RPM with legendary Porsche handling. It really ticks all of the boxes. It's also on a platform that is around 10 years old now, since it was largely carried over from the previous 981 generation, and so it retains physical controls and an interior not overburdened with technology. The Cayman in any trim has always been a wonderful car to drive. However, it's also a bit sad for two reasons. Porsche has already announced that the next generation Cayman and Boxster are going to be electric. The Mission R concept car is a proving ground for some of the technology that will likely end up in the next generation. That means that the GT4 RS is, cue the cliche, the end of an era of exciting internal combustion sports cars. We will likely never see another car like the GT4 RS again. And that brings me to the second point. Like most Porsche GT cars, it will be nearly impossible to get one of these or even have a chance to drive one. I have had the pleasure of driving the 718 Cayman S, but will likely never drive the GT4 RS. With such a desirable car and being the last of a generation, this will be simply out of reach of anyone except those who have already bought dozens of cars in the past from their Porsche dealer. There just won't be enough allocations. The simple $60,000 Cayman that was an affordable entry into the Porsche sports car world is now also a $140,000 or more like $200,000 with options and markup car that all of us would love to have but will never have the chance. Nonetheless, it is still an incredible example of what the Porsche GT division can do to a car when there are no limitations. They have given us the almost perfect version of a Cayman. I mean, we would still love to have a manual, right? It's a fitting farewell to this generation of the Cayman and likely to the sports car as we know it today. Of course, Porsche has surprised us in the past and is known for listening to their customers. 
The 911R was something that everyone said was the last of a generation, but Porsche has continued with the touring versions of the GT3 for many years since. So you never know, maybe we'll see another special version of an internal combustion Cayman in the future. So that's my take on the new Cayman GT4 RS. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.